Hi, it's me again. So let's talk a bit about um, this request response inside our web server. Let's uh, have a look at our local host just to start the explanation there. It's still running here on port 9000 on our local host. So let me try and write that again, localhost 9000. Now, we're using something called the HTTP protocol and that's pretty much a um, request response protocol so that we can talk stateless between a client and a server. So we're sending information to the server as a request and getting some kind of response back from the server. That could be HTML pages. In our case, it's just a plain text saying, hello world. Now, let me try and show you some information. Let me show you what I did there. I go into the settings up here and there's something called more tools. I'm in Chrome, by the way. So I've installed Chrome. There's something called more tools and developer tools. If you don't have Chrome, go in and Google it and you'll get it there and download it. You can use Firefox as well. I'm just not that strong with that develop tools. When you get in here, it's actually, it's up here in the beginning. That's kind of annoying. And this one is also set on. So I just hide the overview and I press these dots right here and say, I want it to be placed below. That's just my preference. You can do whatever you want there. Now there's a network tab down here. It's probably set on elements when you start up, but I want to look at the network tab because when I do a refresh here now, you'll actually see something being sent to our server. We have something called localhost here, and that's actually sending a request right here. So what's in there? There's some information about where to go and what type of request method to use. Later on, we'll dig into these different methods when we get to it. But they're pretty much the same methods that we're using for CRUD with some extensions. So remember the CRUD video, you could create, read, update, delete. We can get do s most of the same things using uh, these request methods. In this case, a get equals a read actually in the CRUD setup. So it says read something and the status code is 200. And actually here I can see my response that I'm getting back. Okay, so let's try and see what actually is sent. You can see there's a lot of information here, some request header information, a lot of information here. Now, where does that all that information go? What I want to do is try to console lock the request here. So I want it to be print out for me so I can see what's actually in there. So I'll say console dot lock and I'll say uh, request comma and then the request. Now doing this actually makes my whenever the server is hit, it actually prints out the entire request. And that's a lot of information. But I just want to show you that Node.js actually takes a request and puts it into this request JavaScript object. Okay, so let's try and restart the server. If you can't remember, I just shut it down by control C a few times. And then I run it again. Now it's up and running. I'll do a refresh here. And now it looks the same down here. But inside my terminal, a huge amount of data is being printed here. Let's go to the top. Because I just want to see you, show you that this is actually all the data that could be necessary for us to understand. I think I've gotten a little far here. No, actually, here it is. So I wrote request and then I have an incoming message and all of this, you don't have to understand this. Don't worry. This is where Express goes in and helps us, the E in the mean stack. So we'll get back to that. I just want you to understand that this is actually data sent from the client, in my case, the browser. Some of it is populated, some of it is not, but the JavaScript object is still there, created for us to be able to do different things with the request information we get from the client. Now that was the request. Now we have to send something back to the client, and that's this part right here, that's the response. So let's try and console lock that instead. I'll just paste it here and just change it to respond. Oh, stupid, evil notepad. We're going to have to change that in the next lesson. We have to get rid of notepad and go into another tool called Atom so we can start writing code in a bit simpler way here. So now I have a response instead. And yes, I have to restart my server. That's another thing we want to change soon. So we don't have to restart all the time because that's really annoying. Let's refresh the page. 
And now if I go back, I'll see there's also a huge response object here that's supposed to be sent. At least some of this information is being sent back to the browser who requested this URL. So there you have it. That's a request and a response from the browser. That's also a very quick in, uh, introduction to the developer tools inside Chrome. I really encourage you to use Chrome. Firefox has some tools as well, and so does Edge and any of the uh, Microsoft products out there. But I use Chrome because I like it, I think it's easy to use, and I'm used to it. So you can decide yourself. But now you have an idea about request response objects, what they're, they're all about. Just think of the request as the client sending an envelope of information into the internet. And the server gets that information and then converts it into whatever he wants and sends a response back to the client. And of course, these two, the server and the client knows where to send the request and where to send the response. So they know about each other. That's all inside this envelope it's sending back and forth. That's the introduction you get for request and response in the HTTP protocol. If you want to know more, go in and Google it. There are plenty of information uh, on the net about these, this specific protocol.